welcome to our channel so today's session we are going to discuss about 8085 timing data okay just you consider one example move b comma c okay so in this session only concentrate on output fetch okay so the microprocessor getting the instructions okay so mov b comma c so first you check the instruction whether this instruction is a one byte instruction or two byte instruction or three byte instruction okay so move b comma c so this instruction is a one byte instruction okay because in this instruction itself you don't give a eight bit data on 16 bit address location so in the instruction itself only passing the two registers so move b comma c so it's a one byte instruction in the instruction only present of code so only present operation code okay so before drawing the timing diagram first you initialize the program counter value for the specified instruction so the instruction is move b comma c first assign the program counter address location so 4100 is a program counter location so in this location the microprocessor read the instruction move b comma c okay so it's a human understandable language first you convert this human understandable language into machine level language okay the machine level language of move b comma c is 41 hertz okay so the 41 hertz is a off code of the specified instruction move b comma c okay so in this timing diagram you can mention the program counter value and also the off code ranges. The program counter value is a 16 bit. So this 16 bit value is split into a 2 8 bit value. This 00, 0 is represent the PCL. So PCL for program counter lower order address. 41 is a PCH. So PCH for program counter higher order address location. So these locations is represent in a higher order address location and also lower order address location. This 41 hertz is a off code data. So this data is present in a off code place. Okay. So before draw the timing diagram, first you know the some signals. Okay. So these are the signals of timing diagram. First one is clock and then A to A15, AD0 to AD7, ALE, IO slash M bar. Or D bar and W R bar. The first one is clock. So clock is a one signal to activate the blocks. Okay. So to activate the internal functions. So in this instruction move B comma C. So in this instruction you need four time cycles is required to execute the instruction. Okay. So here you need a four time cycles. The time cycle refer T1, T2, T3 and T4. So these four time cycles is required to execute the instruction. Okay. The first clock signal it represents the T1, T2, T3 and T4. Here using the four time cycles. So this clock signal is a low signal. Okay. So here taking the lower edge, negative edge clock signal. Okay. The basically the clock signal classified into positive edge negative edge trigger positive level negative level there are using four types of clock signal so in this timing diagram i am taking the negative edge trigger okay so only activating the negative edge so 1 to 0 so while it going to 1 to 0 that time only activating the remaining signals okay so the here clock signal is t1 t2 t3 t4 then the second signal is A to A15. Okay. A to A15. So it represents the higher order address location for the specified instruction. Okay. The here the memory location is 4100. It represents move B comma C. The higher order address location is 41. So here the PCH, PCH represents for the higher order memory location. Here you write 41 H. The 41 H represents the higher order address location. Here this three time cycle is required to getting the program counter higher order address location. Okay. So T1 to T3. So this time 
a striker to accessing the higher order address location the next signal is ad0 to ad7 so ad0 to ad7 is a multiplexed address and data lines so it's a 8 bit line so in this signal you are accessing the program counter lower order address and also the opcode of the specified instruction okay so it's a multiplexed signal if you want to demultiplex the address and data you can use aae signals it's a next signal of the timing diagram okay now you get the program counter lower order address location the lower order address location is 00 hz so 00 hz so it's a program counter lower order address location then you can get the opcode of the specified instruction so opcode is a machine level language the move b comma c corresponding opcode value is 41 hertz here you write the opcode value 41 hertz okay so after that you can use ale signal so this signal is mainly used to demultiplex demultiplex the lower order address and data okay so here ale signal the starting of t1 so t1 clock signal only its higher value ALA value equal to 1. So, in this particular time only you can get the lower order address location. So, after that this value is goes to low. So, this value represents 0. Okay. Only this bus is accessing the output value. So, only this bus accessing the data. Okay. While ALA value equal to 1 you can get the program counter lower order address location. Then this value equal to 0 you can get the of code so of code value or data values okay the next signal is io slash m bar so io slash m bar means it's the data get from input or output device or memory unit so memory unit or input output devices okay so in this instruction you can get the information from memory okay because the instruction is stored in the program memory you can access the data from the program memory. So here you represent 0. So IO slash M bar value equal to 0. So in this case only enabling the memory. So IO value is disabled. Then S1 and S0 these two signals are representing the status of the microprocessor. Whether it read the data or write the data or fetching the output. So in this instruction only you considering the opcode fetch okay so opcode fetch means s1 value 1 s0 value 1 both the values are 1 the microprocessor understanding only fetching the data from program memory okay the next signal is rd bar so rd bar means it's a read signal so read signal is a active low so active low represent 0 the 0 signal is enabling the read command okay so here when you are getting the operand opcode value so when you getting the opcode value that time only enabling the read signal so this particular time only you can enabling the read value okay so in this time only the read value is zero remaining all the time cycles you can get one okay so this particular place only you can read the opcode value next one write function so it's also active loop so in this instruction we don't performing any write function only reading that command from program memory okay so in this instruction the write value is always one so it's a disabled condition okay so it's a timing diagram of a uh, opcode fetch okay it's very easy just you take a instruction and then you assign the program counter value and also find the opcode value Suppose you know the opcode value directly mention 41 hertz or otherwise you just here mention opcode data that's enough okay so thanks for watching my channel thank you